Hello everyone and welcome to this week's uh, commentated game. Uh, this will be the 20th board in the Top 50 Brevities, a series that was uh, ran in the periodical GE back in 2007 or 8, I can't remember. And today, uh, red would be Master Li Jia Hua, black would be Grandmaster Liu Tianzhong, which is one of my personal favorite Grandmasters of all time. Grandmaster Liu Tianzhong hails from Henan, uh, sorry, Hebei province, and uh, he's, he used to be the head of the coach there, and under his tutelage, uh, Grandmasters Liu <coughs> Li Lai Qin, uh, Master Yan Wenqing, etc., were all his proteges. Uh, a short link has been given below in the commentary section, and you can, where I have written a short bio. Now, the, this match was played in 1989 uh, in the Chinese National Individual shang -Chi Championships. Uh, Master Li Jiahua is one of the older generation shang -Chi masters from Gansu province. Uh, his sensei was Master Chen Hongfa, uh, who in turn uh, was learned his skills from the legendary Peng Su Shen. So, this match was played in Chongqing, <clears throat> in Sichuan, Chongqing, and uh, it was quite a novelty at the time. And without further ado, uh, we shall see what went on in the game. Now, uh, Master Li Jiahua started with the central cannon. Seven and Grandmaster Liu Tianzhong chose to play P7 plus one early. And red attack with the pawn rank chariot. Screen house defense, seven pawn versus seven pawn, and the riverbank horse. Now, Grandmaster Liu Tianzhong was well known for his uh, riverbank horse, his study of the riverbank horse variation, or the, which is called Zhuo Ma Pan He in Chinese. Uh, he has written a treatise on it and remains one of the main uh, books on the topic. And at the, at the point, at the time when this match was played, uh, this was one of the more popular variations other than the edge cannon for cherry uh, exchange variation. Now, uh, in this match, uh, Grandmaster Liu Tianzhong chose to play the left riverbank horse variation very early in the game. I red counted with uh, RH plus 7, RH plus 7, and the right elephant for defense. Now, so far, so, so far, this is one of the standard ways of playing this position. And in this variation, Red chose to play the 5-9 cannons, which uh, is one of the newer ways that Red can play this position. Uh, it, over the years, over the past two or three decades, this variation has now slowly evolved to become one of the best uh, Red counters or red variations for Red to play in this situation. Now, Black continue with R1 equals to 2. And... Red continued with R9 equals to A. In the match at that time, Grandmaster Liu Tianzhong played C2 plus 6. Now, this novelty was invented by him and uh, it was quite popular in the 1980s. Now, uh, nowadays, uh, C2 plus 4 and P7 plus 1 are more commonly seen variations. Now, there's, there are too many moves in the uh, board. Uh, I shall not go through them. Instead, please uh, click on the link below to see the interactive board where I've uh, written the comments and added the moves in, on my website. Now, after playing, because this was a novelty, and seeing that uh, there's not much that the red chariot could do now, and the black chariot was now prepared to attack, black decided to retreat his chariot to the riverbank, which will later prove to be the biggest blunder in this position. Uh, later, P5 plus 1 was advocated. Now again, there are, there are several sub-variations in this board, but uh, generally speaking, P5 plus 1 will be the advocated move uh, in this position. So, uh, without knowing, uh, this was uh, Red had already planted the seeds for his demise in this situation. So after P2, 
After retreating his chariot, Black chose to attack with by pushing the pawn, threatening to use the horse to capture the to capture the chariot. Now this is quite a complicated situation, and in the match, uh, Red decided to play R two equals to three to capture the pawn, whereby Red I'm sorry, Black immediately took pounce on the opportunity to play c equals to 7. Now in the riverbank, left riverbank horse variation, one of the key points to know is that the cannon and the chariot in the same file uh, should be kept under, uh, should be pinned as much as possible because once black will free himself from the pin, the cannon could do a lot of damage. Now uh, after playing c equals to 7, Red decided to try to trade material with H8 plus 7. Now this, in hindsight, would also further weaken Red's defensive formation and there would be uh, other, uh, there would be many consequences to pay. Instead, it was advocated that Red should have played uh, C5 equals to 6, whereby he could link the elephants at the central file and negate any uh, possible attacks by the black cannon targeting the elephant. So uh, instead, Red chose to play H7 plus 6, which black decided to trade uh, horses with. And Red did not capture the cannon and instead chose to capture the horse. So far so good. And as can be seen at this point in time, the red chariot would have wasted too many moves. Uh, red would have wasted too many moves just by moving the chariot. Okay, so this would be another major consequence that uh, red would have to face. And as can be seen, because Red had used up too many moves to move this chariot, Black would have already developed all his major pieces, and there was ample space for Black to further develop his pieces. And Black's defenses were adequate at this point in time. Now, uh, what would happen if P3 plus 1 were played? Black would retreat his cannon to attack the horse, forcing the black the chariot on the riverbank to move another to make another move, but black would simply trade material, offer a trade of chariots, and still deciding to sacrifice his chariot for two of red pieces. And as can be seen at this point in time, black could have uh, used only one chariot to trade for three of the red pieces and at, uh, at this point in time uh, black would have a slight material advantage and as can be seen the pawn rank chariot over here would now be prepared to capture the red pawns and generally speaking black would have a advantage in this position so that was why p3 plus 1 was not advocated and red decided to play hr6 equals to 3 and Black continued his attack. By making this move, Red was prepared to capture the elephant for a check and then capture the Red Chariot. So that was why Red would have to play e3 plus 1 uh, as a prophylactic measure. Now, as can be seen, Red's formation was further weakened. And at this point in time, uh, the cannon, the black cannon on the second file will now play its role in attack. As can be seen, re retreating the uh, cannon to this place would target the uh, black horse because black would now be prepared to capture the horse and offer a trade of chariots. And if red captured the black uh, chariot, red would not, not use the horse to capture the black chariot and play c7-2 instead to gain material. So, as can be seen, that was why Black moved his chariot away, which again, in just a span of 15 moves, Red had used up at least 5 moves just to move this chariot, thereby giving Black a greater initiative. 
and it was at this point that black played a very good move with r8 plus 2. This move would block the elephant and prevent it from defending the uh, bottom rank. And as can be seen, red would, black was now prepared to concentrate material to cannons and one chariot to attack uh, red's right flank. So black decided to retreat and try to relieve some pressure with r6 minus 2 and red continued with c5 uh, black sorry black continued to trade material and because the elephant was here now instead of uh, capturing the the red chariot or capturing the cannon black played c5 equals to 9 now this was a very very uh, Good move, a very powerful move, whereby the cherry now, uh, the cannon will now apply a skewer to red's cannon rank, and also threaten to capture the red chariot. So uh, red will still have to cough up one chariot if he wanted to continue to trade material. And seeing that uh, black was about to gain material, red refused and played i eight minus seven to try to protect this. Uh, chariot, but uh, in fact, uh, this would uh, further weaken or further further deteriorate the situation, the red situation on the board. Now, if what would happen if red tried to play h3 minus one to prevent uh, the impending checkmate? Black would simply capture the chariot, capture the chariot, check, and red would lose material uh, would be sure to lose material at this point in time because now uh, not only is the cannon threatening to capture the red chariot black would also have the option of playing r8 plus 1 for discovered check and capture the chariot wherever it goes or immediately capture the horse should, it move, should the chariot move to uh, some place where it can be protected so uh, black would gain material in this exchange and red would also be destined to lose if h3-1 were played. And after allowing black to concentrate three pieces on red's right flank, uh, red was in deep, deep trouble. There is a saying in Shangqi uh, called San Zi Gui Bian Yi Ji Qi, which means that uh, if you were able to concentrate three major pieces, be it a chariot horse pawn combination or in this case a chariot cannons combination attacking the enemy's uh, weak flank, uh, you, you will usually spell the doom or spell the end or spell the end for the opponent. So and with Grandmaster Liu Tianzhong's very aggressive style, uh, basically the game was more or less decided by this time. So Red Black would continue to play R9 plus 2 for the check, forcing A4 plus 5, and black continued with R8 equals to 6. This was a very brilliant move because now the Red King would not be able to move to the safety of the Red file. And after making this move, no matter if Red retreated his cannon or whatever, black would simply play C <coughs> C7 equals to 8 to threaten with the double cannon's checkmate. Uh, I ran this position through my computer and these were the moves that I gave. So it would not matter if uh, these were the moves that were given in the computer, but as can be seen, there will be no escape from the central cannon, uh, so from the double cannons. So this is a very short brevity and uh, it shows how Things, how things can spiral out of control just within the span of one or two moves. And uh, Grandmaster Liu Tingzhong proved that he was really one of the experts on the left riverbank horse variation. Uh, Grandmaster Liu Tingzhong is also famous for his 5-7 uh, cannons as red. And uh, he has been called fondly as the principal of the 5-7 cannon school, Wu Qi Pao Xiao Zhang. So uh, he's one of my favorite grandmasters, and although he's aging about, I think, 70 years old now, uh, 70 plus, uh, he's still quite active, and uh, I hope to see more 
books or more material that have been written by him. He's quite a prolific author also. So uh, I hope you have enjoyed this short brevity. And if you like the work that I do, please subscribe to my channel and give me a like. Thank you and have a nice week ahead.